Right, uh, now Quran and Sunnah combined, the proof is still on the to set out 100% rules for everything, for every kind of reason. Right, I mean, Quran and Sunnah combined, uh, are they sufficient for support for setting out rules for life? Are they sufficient for 100%? You don't need any more interpretations, any more comments, nothing. You can just take them as they are. No, 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 you see, there's a point. The Quran, if the Quran wants to mention all details that should be happening with the whole, all details, you will be having cars, you will be having subways, it's right to, it's right to ride subways, but it is not right to ride the airplanes, for example. I think, I think these details should be mentioned in one volume. It will be hundreds of volumes. Yes, I know, of course, it's impossible, that's what I'm saying. So, the Quran gives the basis, the basis, the basis of all the things that you want to know during your whole life. From the time it was revealed until the day of judgment. So how do you how do you get now the rules for the things which are not To give you an example, if you want to establish a school today, and there was not there was no school in the, in the same the, yeah. format that we have today, all right? We go to the Quran and the Sunnah. For example, we say we see. Is it wrong to, to have a school? No. The Quran urge us to seek to seek knowledge, to seek etc. 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 So it does not agree with the basis but it does mean that Allah has to mention all details of every every single matter what about the atomic bomb shall we shall we invent it or we should not invent it Quran gives you the detail, the basis of all the details of what you need really in your life give you a small example also but it's a matter of interpretation at this point pardon of course, I mean it's a matter of different people I mean, Depending, depending on your conceptions or preconceptions of certain things, depending on your opinion, different people might interpret it. Yes, yes, yes. I, I, I could easily imagine someone who has read the Quran, so that's an example of coming up with, with, with yes or no answers. No, it's wrong to think. It's wrong to think that everything is prepared. It's like just like you know, a cake prepared for us. It's wrong to think that everything is prepared and we don't have to think, we don't have to use our minds. No, 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 that's wrong. But we use our minds. We created it for what? Only to have work, to think about, you know, life means issues. No. But rather to think about religious means also. Not only this. People today are you they are very open minded with things concerning the matter of matters of life. But when it comes to the matter of religion, you go and try and see them there, how black mind how black minded are they? They don't think so yeah just one just one second. Uh, uh, what was that? Uh, yes. There are interpretations. These there are interpretations for the Quran and for the Sunnah, but these things should be the, uh, the, uh, should be uh, permitted. People who are giving these interpretations, they should be qualified. Those who study the Quran, and study and, the Sunnah. Yeah, and, and they should give um, much less uh, value than the actual. It still can be wrong. Sure, sure. But they must be knowledgeable people, people, scholars, I mean. If he makes some ishtihad, ishtihad it means exercise. He tries his best to find out the best opinion. The Prophet said if he makes if he makes it wrong, while he tried the best, if he makes it wrong, he will be given one reward. If he makes it right, he will be given two rewards. Because he tried his best, but he did not find the truth in, in certain methods. He'll be rewarded in, in both ways. Whether he made it right, I don't know if you understand. But the one who gives his own opinion, which came, which we, which was based on his ignorance, is not rewarded, even if he made it right. Because we are not he made it right. Yes, I mean, if you, for example, if yes, for example, if I give. An interpretation. You are not allowed to interpret the Quran except through a certain basis. You have to get knowledge. How can you interpret the Quran while you are ignorant? For example? 
So he made it, you know, he made it like this. Said, yes, this is my interpretation. And it was right. But the procedure was wrong. Because he... I hope you understand what I mean. He... His... I, I, I can, the I can approach see. is wrong. Yeah. The approach is wrong. It's Even right in this context. I was just concerned about other things. This year. I was concerned about the fact that people might act in the right way or might be a certain rule. No, 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 no. That's not what I meant. Yeah. I, I know, That's I know. not what I meant. I meant a person who gives dangerous decisions. Because when you talk about... When you interpret the Quran, Come, 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 come. Listen. Not very good. When you, when you, when you interpret the Quran, that is a dangerous matter. It's not a normal matter that you interpret as if you are interpreting any other matters. You are interpreting the book of God, the word of God. You have to know what you're saying. Even if you made it right, the approach is wrong. You are not. You're not going to be uh, punished or you're not going to be... It's, it's not considered wrong because the answer itself, because of the approach. We are we're not allowed to speak without knowledge. That is the case. I hope this understood to you. Are you a uh, Muslim? <laughs> you're not Muslim, you're Christian. You are agnostic. You are atheist. No, I'm not serious. Agnostic. <laughs> Searching. Searching. Searching for the truth. <laughs> you, uh, how do you feel? Is it uh, close to you? <laughs> now? I mean, uh, I've studied this a lot. I mean, it's the truth of anything I've come to before. Alhamdulillah. <laughs> May Allah open your heart for guidance. But, be careful. When you study more about Islam, and you don't follow it, I said that what the Christians say is a falsehood. It's not it's a falsehood. Huh? Why is it a falsehood? It's a falsehood from many angles. First of all, it is not the way of God or the religion of God. And he sends someone or causes someone to die for the sins of other people. Okay? The way that you are... The way that but you, how can you judge what God wants to do? Because God told us in the Quran. In the what? He also told us in the Bible. In the Quran. He told us in the Bible. But the Bible, why should I believe the Bible? Yeah, but why, why should we believe, believe you? I told you. Listen to my <laughs> talk. If you listen to my talk... Well, could, you just quick, could you just quickly recap you on the Quran? I said? He did. So why? How do you know it's stupid when you didn't even hear? Or you just like a sheep like him? Like yeah? a sheep. So you, what's he? Your shepherd. Like a sheep. Bear. You like a sheep. Bear. Bear. No, I don't <laughs> sound like a sheep. Your mentality no, you sounds sound like, like a sheep, sheep mentality. Then what he says, you just say, yeah, 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 yeah. What's that? You didn't even hear what I have to say. I'm listening to what you said. Huh? Can we hear what you're gonna? Can we hear so what like you said? Say. Okay. You see, I don't believe in the book. It tells me this. It's the Bible. I can the Bible out. I have my Bible here. What is our Bible around you then? Let me tell you, okay, that I spent 10 years in a monastery. Yes? I just want to tell you. So I know the Bible. I know Christianity quite well. But you live it. Have you ever lived it? I lived it, yes. I lived it. No, I lived a lie. Here it goes. Huh? And God said, let there be light, and there was light. And God saw that the light was good, and he separated the light from the darkness. God called the light day, and the darkness he called night. And there was evening, and there was morning, the first day. All right? But it's not until the fourth day that God says, let there be lights in the expanse of the sky to separate the day from the night, and let them serve as signs to mark the seasons, and let them be lights in the expanse of its sky to give light on the earth. And it was like that. So God made two great lights. The greater light to govern the day and the lesser light to govern the night. You see, I can't believe in a book that tells me God made the night and the day before he ever made the sun. Okay? So that's why I don't one of the reasons and the number numerous reasons I don't believe in the Bible. Now you find me a stupid mistake like that in the Quran and maybe I listen to you complaining that uh, why do I follow my religion? You find me something like that. A scientific or a historical or a contextual mistake in the Quran. Find me the errors. That's because it was written.
written by prophets who listen to God. What? So God revealed that to a prophet? God didn't even know how he to so a number of prophets. God doesn't even know how the night and the day is caused? <laughs> God knows how it's caused. Why, why didn't you He spoke it and it, was, and it was there. Come on. That's not written by a prophet. That was written by granddad, uh, what's his name, uh, Yakubi uh, Maka, okay, who was telling his grandson a nice story, bedtime story. Huh? God created the light and the day before he even created the sun. That's not a prophet of God who didn't say that. Okay? God is like God don't speak ignorantly. So God created himself then? God was before the earth. God he created he said the God earth. is light. So he created himself? When God created God the is light, light. Did he what? Cre so what? He created himself then. When God created the light, he didn't what did he himself. do? He was there. Himself? From the beginning of the time. Let's see what it is. Let's read again. Come on, it says. Okay, let's go over it again. Okay, thank you very much. <laughs> okay, let's go over it again. Huh? Let's read it again. And God said, Let there be light. And there was light. And then He called it day. Yeah, He called it day. Day. Yes, D A Y. It's there written day. Okay. And the darkness. He called night, and then he even goes on to say, and there was evening, and there was morning, the first day. But God hasn't even created the sun. Well, I mean, what can you do? And that's why... So what do you believe about God? Huh? I believe that he died so that I may live. You believe God died? Yes. <laughs> he died for me. But isn't God the ever-living? He died and he rose again. Isn't God the ever-living? I'm asking you. Do you yes, he that? is. Okay, ever-living means something that never dies. In earthly form, he can die. He came down as a human. He came down as a human. He came down as a human. He's not God. Because God is not man, as it says in the book of Job. He I am God, not man. man. But it says here in the book of Job, I am God, not man. So if he came down as a man, therefore you have a contradiction, which means that can't be from God. One of the other statement is a lie. Either your statement is a lie or Job is a lie. Whichever you say, both is in your book. That's a contradiction. Job, and then you go into the New Testament. Old Testament is the old covenant with so man. God, so God, what, New so, Testament is a new covenant. So God's man. schizophrenic, right? One day no. he's like this, one day he's like that. <laughs> huh? He can't make up his can mind what he is. Can you give me a chance to speak, please? Huh? Can you give me a chance to speak, or are you just going to carry on? What, if you want to preach to me about Christianity, no, I'm not going to preach to you. I just want. What's the point? I, I just want to talk to you, but you're not giving me a chance to talk. Why? All you want to tell me is something I've heard a hundred times before. <laughs> huh? I know every. I don't think you. I don't think you'll bring me a new argument that I haven't heard before. Okay? And every time I hear a Christian say it, makes me even more convinced. Okay? How foolish and misguided as a religion Christianity okay. so what has, so Muhammad, you're not going what to has Muhammad done for you then? Come on. Do you mean what has Muhammad done? What has Muhammad done for you? He's Why do you follow Muhammad? Muhammad? Why do you okay. follow him? Muhammad, I follow him because he's a messenger of God. Okay? And God taught Muhammad to teach us how to worship God. The way should God you, wants to be worshipped. Should you okay? be following God or Muhammad then? Uh, Who should you be following? God, God or Muhammad? God. I'm following God. You're following God? Yes. Why are you talking about Muhammad then? Because Muhammad is a messenger of God. God taught Muhammad what to tell us and how to worship him. Okay? I am following God through the messenger Muhammad. Muhammad teaches us how to worship God. As did Moses. Didn't Moses do that? Yeah, but I don't worship Moses. Excuse me, wait a minute. I don't worship Muhammad. I don't believe Muhammad's God. I believe he's a man. He's a prophet. Just like Moses is a prophet. Okay? God told Moses, here it is, Leviticus. Okay? Lots of rules, numbers, laws, how to live. Deuteronomy. All of which God, according to you, your belief, gave to Moses. Okay? To teach people how to live. That's what I believe about Muhammad. God revealed and taught us how to live and what rules we should live by in our life. Okay, so that we can worship Him completely, not only in our prayers and our fasting and our charity, but also in our political life, our economic life, our daily life. Everything has been taught to us. How do you worship God? How do you do something which He likes and what is pleasing to Him? To benefit yourself in this life from His knowledge and wisdom and benefit yourself in the next by getting to power. <coughs>
paradise through worshipping him and him alone. That's the religion of all the prophets and that's the religion of Jesus. Jesus didn't yeah, but Jesus also ta taught us that we can never come up to God's standards because we are only flesh. And first of all, right, if Jesus said that, okay, then I don't know what he's talking about, okay, because God doesn't want us to come to his standards. We are human beings, okay? God created us human beings and he created us with limitations. When God created no means or possibility. When God created us, he created us perfect. It was no, by man's created us perfect. He did. He Look in Genesis then. He didn't create Look in Genesis. Perfect. I don't believe I read from Genesis. I told you I don't believe in this Bible. He created He What's created man perfect. To, first of all, prove to me the Bible is the word perfect? of God. No, I'm not. First of all, prove to me the Bible is the word of God. If you can't prove to me the Bible is the word of God, I don't want to hear anything from the Bible. It's got no value to me. Okay? You might as well get any madman, get that crazy guy that was standing here, and tell him to come and tell me something. Okay? Because that's his opinion, and that's your opinion, and that's the opinion of some people who wrote down whatever they wrote in there. But prove to me it's from God. I need some proof, some evidence. Otherwise, you say the Bible says the Bible says, and I say I don't care what the Bible says. I'll only care what God's word says. If you say the word, the Bible is the word of God. Prove that it's the word of God. Bring me your evidence that it's the word of God. I put you the evidence why it's not the word of God. Okay? Why I believe it's not the word of God because I believe God knows everything and God would not inaccurately describe how the night and the day is caused. Okay? And that's just the beginning of the contradictions in the Bible. Okay? So I don't believe faith. I don't believe faith. Don't find God well, the Buddhists faith. say the same thing, yeah. would say the same thing. Yeah, so you have to take Harry Buddhism by faith, like this. Yes. Well, so they go by faith. faith. But faith, what faith do you mean is believing something unbelievable without any proof. <laughs> that's believing that an ever-living God died. Okay? That's unbelievable. That something ever -living but he was dies. resurrected. He was rose. It doesn't matter. Again. Ever living. It does. You said that you said we'll for a fact be resurrected. Okay? We'll all be resurrected. That doesn't make us ever living. What makes us not ever living is that God created us in a space of time and that we will die. Yes, we will all be resurrected. It doesn't make us ever living gods. God is ever living, which means he never dies. God never dies. You cannot kill God. Okay? In the book of Timothy, the first Timothy, chapter 6, verse 16, it says, It is only God who never die. For one who will never die, and that is God. Now don't tell me it doesn't yeah, don't tell me it doesn't matter. He died, yeah. When we say he died, you say yes he died, but he, he was resurrection. Don't overstep it. You have to answer it. You have to think about it. God gave you mind to think how come you Are you, you, not, okay. you person who would belong to this to this to this civilization of nineteen ninety five and you make yourself to believe that the one who created you and the one who will make you die is the one who died at the same time. Who died for you. Who died because he loved you. But how can you believe that, that he died while the Bible, while the Bible itself think, says that God never died? Do you think that God's going to create someone that he doesn't My love? My friend, you have to answer the question. Oh my, the I'm Bible not... says that God never died. The Bible says God never died. He died for us. But now you are opposing oh, the Bible. You are, the Bible. you are opposing the Bible. No, the Bible. no, I'm opposing the Bible. Okay, wait a minute, wait a minute. How am I opposing the Bible? Why did God have to die? For us, when he created us, we were perfect. Yeah. By our ill mistakes, because he gave us decisions, we chose to go a wrong way. We chose to go for a we simple did. way. Wait we did. Minute. Which way? Who? We. Men and women. Which men? All of us. You're saying that you don't have free decisions in your life. Wait a minute, wait a minute. Wait a minute. Do you have free decisions chose, in your life? We cho no, I chose my to question. go the right way. Do you have free decisions in your life? I chose Islam, I chose to go the right way. No, do you have, okay, you chose Islam. My friend, you, believe, right that, you believe that he died, you, right? Well, yes. Just one second, just one second, please. You believe that he died? Yes. To pay the price. And you believe that he went back to life. So what price that, that he paid? He paid that. Where's the sacrifice? If the man die and then he he gets back his life again. To be separated from the, God. The sacrifice one day is, more is to die. Anybody can is pay. to lose something. He you did not lose anything. God. You said he is God. So how can he be separated from himself? Do you, look, you're a smart man yourself. Have you ever heard about the Trinity? Yes. I'm have smart. You? you think? Why do you think I'm a Muslim? Because of nonsense like the Trinity. <laughs> <laughs> That's exactly why I'm a Muslim. The, a, a, a thing that tells me there's one God and he's three gods all at the same time. It doesn't make any Omnipresent. sense. Omnipresent. Have you ever heard that expression before? <laughs> yeah, I heard it's rubbish. God's not omnipresent. Omnipresent. How can you not, not be in every God, place? 
him once because he's not under my shoe. He's not in my poo poo. Okay, he's not up my nose. God is not everywhere. He's within God you, right? is above the heavens. Our Father who art in heaven, not who's up my nose and inside me and everywhere. Our Father who art in heaven. May if your kingdom Jesus, come. If in Jesus said, Our Father earth, who art in heaven, in heaven, why didn't he say, Our Father in who's, earth, who's in why didn't he say, Our Father who's right here now? Huh? Our me. God who's Jesus right here now. Jesus is just saying that as a prayer. For the so it same. doesn't mean anything. So he, he was says, praying. Our Father, right so now. he was it praying. Just doesn't mean anything. So Jesus was praying. If Jesus was praying, to whom he was praying while well, he is God, he's supposed to be God. He said, "Earth limitations." Jesus so. You believe that he's you're God. saying he's on earth with limitations, but something with limitations, by definition, is not God. If it's limited, it's not earth God. limitations. Earthly limitations, by definition, means something with the limitations is not God. How can you deny the fact that God says that? No. How can you deny the fact that he performed like miracles then? Can you perform miracles? Can you deny them? Okay, wait, 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 I'll make you. I'll make you. I'll make you a solemn you promise. If you can perform you a miracle a right in front of me right Where now. Where you ask me? I'll ask you a question. Right? Okay, Jesus performed miracles. Did Moses perform miracles? <laughs> Moses. Yes. Yes. So was he God? He was a messenger. <laughs> <laughs> but you just said now. Jesus performed miracles, therefore he's God. Therefore, logically, Moses performed miracles, therefore he's God. <laughs> Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the light. Yeah, so every prophet said, I'm the way, and the truth, and the light. No, they didn't. Yes, they did. Find me another quote every where prophet, another prophet in the Bible says say, they are the they way, the truth, and the light. They didn't have to say it. Every prophet, when he came, was John the, the Baptist way, said that was the I make the way. The I light. make the way yeah. for the one who's going to me, John Baptist said it. It's in the Bible. Well, I don't Pick believe the Bible. Fine, you don't believe the Bible. You know why? Prove to me There is a difference about the Bible between the Christians themselves. Which Bible anyway you want me to put up? The Catholics say the, the Protestant omitted five, seven books and the Protestants charged the Catholics that they interfered books of hoax and, and, and rubbish. This is a difference not between the Muslim and the Christian, it is a difference between the Christians themselves. So you are always overstepping the point, before you say things. my God, excuse me, before you say my Bible says, you have to prove that this is the Bible of God, before you say my Bible says. All right, that's not, okay. that's one point. Okay, another wait, 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 point, wait, wait, wait. excuse both, both me. Can I, can I, no, I'll, no, 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 I'll, 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 speak. I'll give you the chance to speak. What can I speak? No, no, but this is, okay, go ahead. Okay, go ahead. Thank you. I say to you and your friend, you call down whoever you want to. Perform a miracle to me now. Go on, let's perform you one miracle, miracle to me. But that's not the answer of my question. Go on, you can't ask God to perform a miracle. So can I can, I've got a miracle right with me, right here. What is it? It's the Quran. Take it and read it and you'll find why it's a miracle. Go on. You, you challenge me? Where is it then? It's in my rucksack. Go on, buy one. Go on, buy one. Go and buy a Quran. No, go and buy a miracle. It's okay. Go and buy a miracle from a shop. You can actually go and buy a miracle. You can go and buy a miracle. You can buy a miracle. Sam, I'll go and buy about 5,000. Quran is a miracle. The Quran is a miracle. I feel happy now. I can go and buy loads of miracles. You can, yes. Well, I can buy a miracle. It's the same book. You see, I'll buy a miracle, I can raise you from the dead, mate. The, the same thing that you question him, you, you, should, you should be questioning we'll me. The same. We'll ask you the same question. You do a miracle then. Go on. Me do a miracle? Yeah, yeah. yeah come on, do it. Good. I have to do a miracle. <laughs> <laughs> well, how come you have to do that? Yeah. Do, okay, I'll tell, no, you, you do a miracle. I'll tell you the miracle you can do, right? The miracle that's in your book, okay? To prove whether you're a Christian or not. Where is it? Sheikh Dimitri, he has to drink poison, or he has to eat, uh, he has to be bitten by a snake, or he has yes. to talk in many yes. tongues. Matthew, Where is it? Matthew, Matthew. I don't remember the reference. He said, if you drink poison, it will not affect you. Give me poison. This is the this is the sign. Give me poison. This is the give sign. Give me poison. I'll give you my wee wee. You can drink it. Can't, can't you sure? Give me poison. You sure? Huh? <laughs> we want you. We want you to talk in tongues. We haven't got any poison, so talk in tongues for us. <laughs> talk in tongues. Yeah. I don't have that gift. To me, it says that these signs will follow them. These Christians, that anyone who believes in God. Do you also read on it? It says that they have gifts of prophecy. They no, have gifts. Doesn't say that. Where is it? Where's the reference? Do you know where the gifts are? Where's the reference? I'm afraid that <laughs> Haven't you got the Holy Spirit with you? I've got the Holy Spirit right me now. Right in you. Didn't the Holy Spirit reveal this book? Yes. So can't he find the reference for us? <laughs> Have you read Matthew 20, 28, my dear? Yes. Do you remember when Jesus said, Oh my God, why have you forsaken me? Yeah. Let him let the Holy Spirit find the reference. Yeah. Yeah. How can you how can how but can you explain to the people How can the Holy Spirit take so long? Yeah. How, <laughs> no, let, let, give, him a give the Holy Spirit a chance. Give him a chance, man. please. Okay. <laughs> you a chance of the Holy Spirit. <laughs> But shouldn't the Holy Spirit know the reference automatically? Look, oh, man, don't I'm a, I'm, look, 
No, I'm going to be in a Christian for a short time. Please run, please run. Go on, go on. Thank you. I'm going to be a Christian for a short time and become a Muslim. I don't follow truth, I don't follow lies. Are you following lies? We just showed you what lies you're following. Maybe the battery of the communication between you and the Holy Spirit, uh, the battery is not working anymore, maybe. Try to yeah. You have to recharge it. Okay. Go to the pub, inshallah. Let me say to you something while you're looking at the at the yeah. Yeah. Okay. When when it, when God described Jesus in the Matthew in Matthew chapter twelve verse seventeen that he is the servant of God. Yeah. Matthew twelve seventeen, he is the servant of God. How can the servant of God be be servant and God at the same time? How can we believe that Jesus used to pray? In Luke chapter 3 verse 13 and other places, he used to worship God and he is God. How can Jesus speak to God saying, oh my God. And he said to the people, I'm going up, I'm, I'm going to up my father. to my father and your father, my, my God, God and, and your God. Yes. You want me to give you the reference? <laughs> I can give it to you while I have no Holy Spirit in my, in my body. No, it's okay, because you only read from life, man. You only read from life. Mm -hmm. Let's pray. Let's pray. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen. Allahumma salli ala Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi ajma'i. In the name of Allah, the most compassionate, the most merciful. I testify and I bear witness from knowledge, from experience, from having looked and having studied and having seen that indeed the reality is that there is nothing worthy of our worship except the one God, the true God, the creator of the heavens and the earth, the mighty, the wise, the holy, and that is Allah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Allah who is the one who is free from all imperfections, free from the imperfections of man, free from the imperfections of creation, free from weaknesses, free from ignorance, free from being misguided, free from making mistakes. Allah is the one who is free from all imperfections. So we must know, my dear people, that is a great lie and a great insult when they say God has become a man or that God has manifested himself in the form of a human being because a human being has weaknesses, a human being has imperfections, a human being has faults, whereas God, Allah, the Creator is free from imperfections, free from faults. This is Allah. This is my Lord and this is your Lord. This is the God of Moses. This is the God of Abraham. This is the God of Jacob. This is the God of Jesus. And this is the God of his last and final messenger, Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. May his may God's peace and blessings be upon him. One God people, one religion. You see, we Muslims, we don't believe in lots of gods. And we don't believe that there are lots of religions revealed by God. And we don't believe there are lots of ways to God people. There is one religion that God revealed to all of mankind. The same religion. Jesus didn't come with Christianity. And Moses didn't come with Judaism. And Muhammad didn't come with Mohammedanism. They came with the same religion, the same religion. Yes, their laws differed, but the message was the same. And that is the message that God wants to give you, to teach you the reason for which you exist, the purpose for which you've been created, the reason why you're here on this earth. What's it all about, people? You see earthquakes, you see pain, you see people rich and you see people poor. You see people who are healthy and you see people who are ill. You see people who are well treated and you see people who are badly treated. Why? Why is it like this? What's the purpose? There is a reason behind all of it, people. There is a reason behind all of it. So how will you find guidance in your life? How will you find happiness in your life? How will you find true peace and tranquility in your life? Unless you know 
the reason for all of these things. And that is why God sent us prophets. God sent us prophets. He sent us messengers to teach us how to live to teach us the realities of the purpose for which we've been created. That's right. And Moses didn't come with a different message from Jesus. And Jesus didn't come with a different message from Muhammad. They came with the same message. And that message was Islam. Islam. Because Islam means sincerity and submission to the one true God. And God's not asking you to be saints. God's not asking you to be perfect like the Christians tell you. The Christians tell you that somehow God expects you to be perfect. But He knows you're not perfect. He created you with weaknesses. He created you. You need to go to the toilet. You're never going to be able to stop being needing to go to the toilet. You need to breathe. You need to eat. You need to drink. You need to love. You need to hate. Yes. You need to, people. Huh? You're not perfect. <laughs> and we are not perfect. And we never will be perfect. And just believing that someone died for your sins is not going to make you perfect. Because these Christians, they tell us, the Christians tell us, Jesus died for my sins in order that we could become perfect again. Well, please go and see for yourself. Are they perfect? Are they perfect? If they're not perfect, then Jesus didn't accomplish what they claim he came to accomplish. Huh? They say that Jesus came to defeat the devil. Huh? Jesus came to defeat the devil. Do you see the devil's been defeated? Huh? Do you see the devil's been defeated? They say that Jesus claimed, Jesus came, they said the punishment, the, the wages of sin is death. The wages of sin are death. But they claim, their book claims, that if you believe in Jesus, you're free from sin. But I see Christians dying left, right and center. There's something wrong here, people. There's something wrong. And you know what's wrong? It's a lie. It's a lie. This Christian world has been told a lie for the last 3,000 years. A lie that Jesus came to tell you that he died for your sins. No, people. That's not Christianity. That's not the message of Jesus. That's the old pagan Roman religion. The worship of a pagan god called Mithra. Can anyone guess what day Mithra was born? Mithra was born on the 25th of December. Huh? He was the son of God. He was a member of a trinity. He was called the Lamb of God who takes away the sins of the world. And guess what his symbol was? The cross. Huh? The cross. You see, people, Christianity, what you call Christianity, is merely a mixture. They took the name of Jesus. They took the name of God. They took a few things that Jesus said and a lot of things he didn't say. They put it in this book they call the Bible. And they said, now, this is Christianity. But in reality, Christianity is a mixture of pagan Roman beliefs uh, and some Judaic beliefs and some things Jesus said. Uh, but it's not the message of Jesus. You know what Jesus came? Jesus came to teach people that they should judge and rule by the laws of God and that they should worship God and they should submit to him. They should follow his divinely revealed commandments and that God doesn't need to kill an innocent man to forgive your sins. You know how you get your sins forgiven? Huh? You know how in Islam, the true religion, sincerity and submission to God, you want your sins forgiven? This is all you have to do. Number one. Number one, you recognize the reality of your Lord, your creator, who he is and what he is. And that you don't insult him and you don't blaspheme against him by saying he becomes a man or he gives birth to children or he begets children or that like we are the sons of God. No, he's glorious above these things. And you don't speak about him without knowledge because people, every blasphemy, every error, every misguided religion always started with somebody saying something about God without knowledge. God likes this and God doesn't like that. God's like this and God's like that. And they didn't know. God never revealed it to them. Huh? So the Quran says, Audhu billahi min ash-shaytan ar-rajim, bismillah ar-rahman ar-rahim. Qul huwa Allahu ahad, Allahu samad, lam yalid wa lam yulad, wa lam yakul lahu kufuwan ahad. Say he is Allah. Say he is Allah. He is the only one worthy of being worshipped. Kulhu Allahu Ahad. He is alone 
Because unlike God, he's not a trinity. He doesn't share his power with somebody. He is alone by himself. Allahu Samad. He is the one upon whom all things depend. Because everything needs God. We need Him. We need His food. We need His air. We need the sun that He created for us. We need Him in order to live. We depend on Him. We are not self-sufficient. We are not self-sufficient. We are not self-sufficient. We, self we, self we need our Lord. We need our Creator. And He needs nothing. And He needs nobody. And He doesn't need us to worship Him. He doesn't need us to pray to Him. He is a samad and lam yalid wa lam yulad. He does not give birth. He does not beget. God doesn't have sex. God doesn't give birth to children. God doesn't have sons and daughters. God doesn't have a grandpa and he doesn't have a grandpa ma. And God doesn't have a mother, like some people say, the mother of God, Mary, mother of God. God does not have parents. He doesn't have mothers. He doesn't have sons and daughters because he doesn't give birth and nothing has given birth to him. And there is nothing like him, people. There is nothing like God. Nothing that can be compared to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. His knowledge is not like our knowledge, for he knows everything. We see what's in front of us in our eyes, but he sees everything. What's under the ground, what's in the tree, what's in the sky, what's in the earth, what's in the heavens. He sees it all. And we hear a few noises. We hear a few people shouting, a few people talking but Allah he hears everything he hears the people over there and he hears the people over here he hears what they're saying in that car over there and that cinema and what they're saying in Nairobi and what they're saying in Timbuktu and all these noises don't confuse him all this noise is not a confusion to him he hears everything and sees everything and he knows everything there is nothing compared to God people nothing that can be compared to Allah that's what he's telling us in the Quran. That's what Abraham came to tell us. So stop it. Stop saying he's a man. Desist. Stop saying that God is three. Desist. Your God is one God, as Allah, he says in the Quran. Your God is one God. This is the message of Abraham. This is the message of Moses. And this is the message of Jesus. And this is the message of Muhammad. Huh? Jesus didn't come with a different religion like they claim. There's no new covenant like they claim. There's one covenant God made with all of mankind. You know what that is? When he created our father, Adam, he took from the back of our father, the souls of all of mankind, the souls of all of mankind. And he gathered all of us before him, every single one of us. And he said, do you testify that I am your Rabb? I am your Lord, your provider, your sustainer, and that I alone am the one who is worthy of worship. And all of us said, yes, yes, we testify to that. And that's because so that we will not have an excuse on the day of judgment, the day when we will stand in front of Allah and every atom's weight of good that we've done, we'll know about it. And every atom's weight of evil we've done, we won't be able to say, oh, I followed my forefathers. I didn't know about this God. I didn't know you were my Lord. I didn't know you were my sustainer. No one told me. I was just following the religion of my ancestors. I was following the propaganda of my newspapers and my media. No excuses on the day of judgment, people. You know that your Rabb, your Lord, your provider is one Lord, one God. Because who do you call to when you're in times of distress, when you're afraid, when you need something so bad? Huh? You imagine now, you're flying in an aeroplane, that aeroplane there, huh? Look up there, people. Imagine now, the guy sitting next to the fire escape. Imagine the door pops open and he falls out. Huh? He's sucked out. Who's he going to call on? Huh? John Major? Drugs? His wife? Huh? Who's he going to call? Oh, my girlfriend, let me have a joint now? Huh? No, let me look nice. I want to look nice when I'm falling. I want to look nice like Naomi Campbell. I've got to be beautiful as I'm falling down to the ground, huh? Is that what you're going to call upon? Is that what you believe? No! God help me! God save me! Please God! I'll be good! I'm sorry for all the wrong things I did in my life! Ah! Now you become a pure believer! Now your faith is pure! Huh? You're suddenly... Where's the atheist now? Where's the... I'm an avowed atheist! My God! You find him calling, supplicating, groveling! Please God help me! Huh? Because you know in your hearts that you have a rub! A Lord, a provider, a sustainer, who is glorious above this, who can help you, who can save you because he has power over all things. You know it in your heart, but hey, he saves you, maybe, and it can happen. He saves you. But what do you do? What do you do? Huh? You go back. 
back to sex and drugs and rock and roll, back to Jesus, back to Buddha, back to John Major, huh? back to all your false ways, your false philosophies. You think, oh, no, money's going to make me happy. huh? That's what I need. Money's going to make me happy. You forget your Lord. You called upon him, but now you're calling upon your money. You're calling upon your bank manager. Why? Because you're trapped now by the lie of your society. The lie that money equals happiness. <laughs> the wealth equals success. <laughs> How the worldly life distracts you. Huh? Until you reach your graves. Your graves, people. The destroyer of the desires. The destroyer of the desires. When you reach your grave, it's finished. There's no reincarnation. There's no second go. Huh? And how many of you, my dear people, how many of you think about it now? You're in front of your Lord, your Creator, on the Day of Judgment. And you see the hellfire. And you see it with a sure vision. And you know you're going to go in it. And you know you're going to burn. And your skin will be burnt and recreated and reburnt so you can taste the punishment. Who are you going to ask then? Who are you going to call upon then? Who are you going to ask help from then? You'll be saying, God, save me, please, God. Huh? And you know on that day, Allah, the Creator, Allah, the true God, Allah, the only one worthy of our worship. He will bring someone. He will bring a man. He will say, oh, you, oh, you, if you had the world, if you had the world in its possessions twice over, twice over, would you ransom it now? Would you ransom it? Would you exchange it to save yourself from the fire? He say, yes, my Lord. Huh? This man who is arrogant, this man who walked down the street, this man who said, I don't believe in God, I believe in evolution. This man who denied his Lord, this man who was ungrateful to his Lord, now he's saying, yes, my Lord, yes, my Lord. And Allah will say to him, I ask for you something less than that, less than the world twice over, less than that. I asked you only that you should worship me alone and that you should not set up rivals and associate and partners with me in worship. That's all he asked of us people. That's all he's asked of us to worship him alone, to make our prayers to him alone, to supplicate to him alone, to fast and give charity, only seeking his face, seeking his pleasure, seeking his paradise and fearing his hellfire. Huh? Not giving charity for other people, not giving charity for Jesus, not giving charity for Muhammad, not giving charity for your family, not giving charity for everyone say, hey, look how generous I am. No, to give it for his pleasure, the one God, the true God, huh? and that you should love him more than anything else. Huh? But you find most of us, what do you find the reality? We love others as we should love Allah. We love them as we should love Allah. Huh? We love people as we should love God. Because what's the reality? And we fear them the way we should fear God. Because we find the path of righteousness. We find the right way. But what do we say? Oh, wait, wait a minute. What will my parents say if I become a Muslim? What will my friends say if I become a Muslim? What will they say? Huh? So who are we more afraid of? Our friends or God? Who do we love more? Our friends or God? This is the false worship, people. This is the false worship. Huh? So don't be a slave. Don't be a slave to your passions. Don't be a slave to your desires. Because most of you, you ask, I'll ask you, why do you do it? You say, I feel like it. I feel like it. Huh? So people feel like raping and they do it because they feel like it. Huh? People feel like killing and robbing and stealing because they feel like it. Huh? So we find now they're a slave to their desires. Whatever their passions call them to, they run after it. And that's what your society tells you. Huh? There's no paradise. There's no hellfire. There's no judgment. Have a good time. Have a good time. So play, people. Like the people of Noah, they played. And the people of Ad and Thalmud, they prayed. And the people of Lot, huh? Sodom and Gomorrah, how they played. And how many civilizations, how many people, they prayed and played and played when their prophets came and their prophets warned them. But they played. But Allah struck them in the midst of their play. Huh? How the Kuwaitis, huh? you see how they played? You see how they played? Playing they were. Reveling in the delights of life. Their oil had given them so much money. Huh? In the land of the Muslims, in the Hijaz, 
in the land where the Prophet of Allah, he was born, Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, in the land where the Quran was revealed, they had a building for homosexuals. Huh? They were drinking, they were fornicating. Huh? But their scholars, the sheikhs, would advise them, Taqallah, fear Allah. His punishment is real. His doom is real, but how they played, huh? how they played, and how Allah, He hit them. He hit them with Saddam Hussein. He hit them with Saddam Hussein. Huh? How they played, how the people of Ad and Thamud and the people of Sodom and Gomorrah walking in the streets, and Allah rained upon them stones and turned their city upside down. So there's not a trace of them left in the land. And the people of Noah, Oh, Noah, what a man, what are you building the ark in the middle of the land? What a joke. They were all laughing and they were all joking. But how they drowned and they were destroyed. Huh? You know what Allah says in the Quran? He says, my people travel through the earth. Travel. Go on. Not to Costa del Sol to take your top off and lie there naked in the sun. No. Not to go down to some place and get <laughs> drunk every night and go to the disco. Travel in the land and see what happened to those who rejected faith. See the ruins of those civilizations. See the ruins of Greece. See the ruins of Rome. See the ruins of Babylon. See the ruins, people, of those who rejected faith in God, who followed their whims and their desires. And look at us today, people. Huh? Look at us today. Look at the reality of our situation. Are we different from Rome? Are we different from Greece? Are we different? Huh? Are we different from them? No, people. And we should know that our fate will be their fate. The inevitable, the sure reality. Well, Allah calls it in the Quran. al haqq the sure reality, the definite reality, is the destruction of those who rebel against God. The destruction of those who lie against God. The destruction of those who reject their Lord and their Maker and the way of life that He revealed for them, for their benefit. But no, huh? but no, they play. So play, people. Live your life of play. But know that you will reach your graves, and when you reach your graves, you will know the reality. But that will be too late. And how many people, how many of us, when the angels are dragging us on our faces into the hellfire, and they asked us, didn't someone come? Didn't someone warn you? And they will say, yes, someone came. Someone warned us, but we thought he was in error. But if only we had used our minds, if only we had used our minds, we wouldn't now be in the fire. And I'm not afraid to you to say to you as a Muslim, use your mind, use your mind, pick up the Quran, use your mind, think about it. Allah has given you proof and evidence. He's asked you, look, he's asked you, contemplate, read the Quran, people, and find out for yourself, find out for yourself. See what this book has to say. See how this book will enlighten you as to the reality of life and death. People, that's all I've got to say for now. A small reminder, a small invitation to you and a proof against you. Because this day, this hour, this minute, is a proof against you or a proof for you? It's a proof against you or a proof for you on the day of judgment. And that day, people, is a day that is sure to come. Prepare for it. Prepare for it. You go on a journey, you make your provision. But the journey of life, you didn't prepare for it. So when you get there and you reach your destination's end, when you get to your grave, huh? And you have no provisions, you have no deeds, you have no good deeds, because you belied your Lord, you reviled your Maker, you are ungrateful to Him, you followed your desires and you didn't follow revelation, so what good deeds will you have? Huh? And then what a great loss that is, Lord. what a great loss. May Allah guide you and me, and now I'm going to hand you over to our Sheikh, Sheikh Abdurrahman Damishki, who's going to take over now. Jazakallah khair, please don't go away, and He will enlighten you more as to the beauty of Islam. And inshallah, I hope that your hearts are open and at least you go away and read and find out and think about things. In the name of Allah, the Beneficent, the Most Merciful. I start my talk by reciting to you what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala 
has said to us, O believers, let not your possessions, neither your children, divert you from Allah's remembrance. Whoso does that, they are the losers. Expand of what we have provided you before that death comes upon one of you. And he says, Oh my Lord, if only you would have de delayed me unto a near term so that I may make free will offering and so that I may become one of the righteous. But God will never differ any soul when its term, when its term comes and God is aware of all the things that you do. This is a call from God Almighty that we should be returning to Him before it's too late. Today you are walking above the earth. Tomorrow, brothers, you will be beyond the earth. You will be down. You don't like to think about it. It doesn't matter, but it's going to happen. You don't like to think about death because that will shuckle you. You want to think about joy. You want to, to think about joy, free will, free sex. You would like to do anything you, you like to do. But listen, a time will come. You, your heart will stop beating and you'll have to be put in a hole. Did you think about that? Did you ever think about that? That you're going to die? And what you have to do before you die. When you think about death, you have to think also, that will encourage you to think about something else. What do I have to do before I die? No one is going to take care for me. If I die today, before I die, when, I, when I'm dying, I'll say to my wife, my wife, please, can you stay with me in my grave? I feel I'm totally alone, I'm desperate. She says, well, my, real, my, my beloved husband, you just go there, and I'll think about following you later. <laughs> You'll be completely alone, but you will not be alone. Either of your good deeds or your bad deeds will accompany you when you will die. Nothing will save you but your own good deeds and righteousness. This is the basic message. This is the basic information of all the prophets. No prophet said, no problem, you can sin. You can do anything you like, and it's on me to save you when you die. It's on me. I will save you. I'll pay your price. Your father is not going to pay your price. Your mother is not going to pay your price. You will be paying the price of your sins today. You will be having to pay the price. What price you have to pay? Dollar or pound? No. You have to pay the price from your own deeds. Either you go to hell or you go to paradise and the life is like this. You are living in this life as a matter of test. This life is nothing but, but test. Whether you are sincere in seeking the truth or you don't care about the truth. You care about how to spend Saturday night fever. You care about how to enjoy yourself. You care about how to be free. Listen, my dear. Not everything good for you, buddy, is good for your heart. Sins, fornication are good for you, buddy. Physically, they are good for you, but they are painful for your heart. Your heart is paying the price of these sins that your body is enjoying. Your body is paying the price. You feel the pain here. You feel the emptiness in your heart, and you need to fill it, but you don't know how to fill it. I say repent to God and return to Him and return to the true religion of God, the true one. And I claim that the true religion is Islam. Well, if a Christian may contradict me, say, well, we, don't, we have never heard about Islam before that. We haven't heard about Islam before that. I say, I'm going to ask you a question. Was Christ Christian? Was Christ Christian? I've been asking someone, a Christian fellow, and he said, no. Christ was a Jew. I said, since Christ was a Jew, why you are Christian? Be Jewish like him. If Jesus Christ was a Jew, be a Jew. Don't be Christian. I said, no, Jesus was Christian. I said, Jesus never uttered the word Christianity. And we know for sure 
that Jesus was calling for a religion. But what was the name of that religion that Jesus used to preach when he was preaching that religion? I have no doubt, we Muslims, we have no doubt that Jesus is the mighty messenger of God. Every antichrist is anti-Islam. Every antichrist is anti-Islam. And let those who did not have any chance to hear about Islam listen to that. For those who think that the Muslims are enemies to Christianity, the Muslims are enemies to Christ, to Jesus, no, any enemy, anyone who is enemy to Christ is enemy to Muhammad. Because this is the way that Muhammad taught us. He said, you cannot believe in Muhammad while not believing in Jesus. Believing in Jesus Christ is a must in Islam, but we have to believe in him properly, in the proper way and in the good way. The Jews said Jesus is a liar. The Christians said Jesus, no, 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 be careful, he's not a liar. He is God. The Muslims say he is neither nor. He's neither liar nor God. He's a mighty messenger, prophet of God Almighty. And he never claimed to be God. In fact, we find in the book of Matthew chapter 12, verse 17, where it states that Jesus is the servant of God. This is our belief. This is what we believe in Jesus. Now we agree with the Bible like this. We shake hands. We shake hands with the Bible. When the Bible describes Jesus to be the servant of God, we shake hands with what John said, chapter 17, verse 3, that Jesus said to God, it is eternal life for people that they may believe that you are the only true one God and I am Jesus whom you have sent. We shake hands with the Bible in this. But we don't shake hands with the Bible when the Bible tells me that God is of three parts, Father, Son, Holy Ghost. In Islam, the key of Islam is what? If we want to enter the house of Islam, how can we enter it? What is the key to the house of Islam? Brothers, sisters, the key of the house of Islam is La ilaha illallah. When you comply to it, you will find the fruits of that compliance in your heart. You will feel the sweetest faith in your heart as soon as you say it, as soon as you declare that no other divine deserves to be worshipped except Allah Almighty. You will feel the difference. We believe that God has no son. God has no daughter. We don't call Mary the mother of God. We don't call Jesus the son of God. God has no son. He has no mother. He has no father. God is the only one creator. Since God is the only one creator, why don't we take him the only one whom we should worship? Why do we have to go out of that way of monotheism? Of Abraham, of David, of Solomon, of Moses. Moses used not to believe in a trinity. Abraham used not to believe in a trinity. He used to believe in one God. But wait a minute. Satan believes in one God. Satan believes in one God. But he's not worshiping that God. He rejected that one God. And today we are rejecting that one God. We say we have no problem in believing that God is one. This is not the only thing that God wanted you to do. This is not the only thing that why God created you. He did not create you only to add a sort of information in your mind to give God a certain testimony. Well, all right. All right, God, I have no problem in believing in you. No. He wants to see your good deeds. He wants to verify, to distinguish those who follow his way from those who follow the, the way of corruption. This is a warn. And brothers and sisters, you will be asked about that moment of warning that you have listened to the call of truth. Our condition, our condition is in Islam is only we are telling the people to worship one God. Not, but not to worship him. I mean, by going only to the mosque or to the church and, and devote themselves day and night there. No. All of your good deeds, the charity that you give is a matter of worship. To be kind to your people is a matter of worship. God is going to ask you at the day of judgment about your sincerity, about your truthfulness, about your deeds. Don't think that you can get away with it. Don't think that someone is going to pay the price. Christians believe that Jesus paid the price already. 
Now tell me, if I go to the nightclub today, if I'm Christian and I go to the nightclub today, and someone tempt me, a female tempts me to go there and to do something. Now I start to start to think about it. Wait a minute. God may be punishing me if I do that. Another thought will come to me. No, he paid the price already. He paid it. Come on, man, go there. He paid it. We don't believe in that. This small concept had led the people to a great corruption. People today do not care about religion. They don't care about anything. They only, the, the, the time they go to the church at Sunday, from week to another, people, they have the priests who tell them that salvation is not through works. It's only through believe. Believe that he died for you and salvation is yours. Believe that he shed his blood for you and you'll be saved. Is that all? Is that all that uh, God asked us to do? No. In Islam, brothers, you have to accept that God should be ruling you because God is perfect. But you have to do something before that. You have to study Islam and to think and to reason. To reason. Is that really the word of God? You, are, you will never be able to understand Islam through the mass media, through newspapers, through journals. No, you won't be able. It is enough judgment, it is fair judgment to reason, to, to know about Islam by the book of Islam. And the book of the religion will stand always as the proof of the religion. If the religion is right, if the book is right, the religion is right. If the book is wrong, the religion is wrong. We do not allow people to, draw, to, to drink alcohol. Alcohol is not allowed. Whether small amount or big amount, it's not allowed at all. We cannot, we don't tell the people that alcohol is disallowed and then afterwards we give, we give the people a glass of wine and say, this is the blood of Jesus. Drink this wine. This is the blood of Jesus. You know? One big drunkard, intoxic intoxicator, he went to the church and he wanted to repent from drinking alcohol. The Pope, oh, this, the priest offered him a glass of wine. He said, my father, what is this? He said, my son, drink it. This is the blood of Jesus. He said, my father, I want five bottles of the blood of Jesus. <laughs> I want five bottles of, of the blood of Jesus. We don't believe that the bloody alcohol represents the pure blood of Jesus Christ. We Muslims believe that his mother is one of the first women, one of the best women on the face of the earth. And she will be, at the day of judgment, the virgin, the greatest woman, the woman number one in paradise. That is a Muslim belief. But we say to the Christians, please, we do not we do not mean to offend you. We do not mean to, you know to, to be to be bad to you. But we want you to understand us and to understand the task that you have to give during this lifetime. The brother was saying something re remarkable. He said, if we ask anyone, why do you have that watch in your hand? Why do you have it? Why do you have it? You will give the answer. As soon as I ask you why, you will say because. Why because? Why because? Now I have to ask you another question. Why you are created? Why you are created? Here we find no answer from many people. Why they do not have the answer to that? The answer is to comply to God, to surrender to God, to follow the religion of God, and that is Islam. Jesus Christ was not Christian. Well, the people say he was a Jew. All right, let's follow that word Judaism as we follow the word Christianity. And we've been telling people that Christ was not Christian. They said Christ was a Jew. All right. What about Judaism? It came from where? It came from the name of Judah. Was Judah Jew? Was Judah Jew? No answer. But we know that Judaism is a name taken from the name of Judah. What about the grandfather of Judah, Abraham? Was he Christian or Jew? He was neither nor. So I have to know what, what's the name of the religion? What's the name of God? The Christian said that the name of God is God. You know, he explained that the water is water. 
I just want you to tell me what is the name of God. But please don't tell me that the name of God is God. Because it so sounds, you know, odd. It's, it's, it's nonsense. I want to know his name. His name. What is his name? Can anyone tell me his name? Can anyone tell me the real name of God? We know that God is an attribute. God is an attribute. You know, the only difference that you can, that you can uh, distinguish is when we write the name God to you. Because... We know when we when we mean to mention God, the, the true one, we write the capital letter G. So when I see the capital letter, it becomes, it means that we're talking about the true one God. When we write small letter G, it means that we're talking about false gods. All right? All right. <coughs> now, if I'm blind and I can't read, how can I verify? How can I distinguish between the capital G and the, and the small g? Don't tell me that whenever we talk about God, we say, our capital G God is the creator of the world. But the small g God is not the creator of the world. What are you trying to say? <laughs> the name of God is Allah. You may disagree with that. You say, listen, I mean, we disagree with this. I say, please, if you go to any bookshop, look, seek the Arabic translation of the Bible from any church or from any bookshop. And open, give me please the Bible in Arabic. Excuse me, give me the, give me the Bible in Arabic. In my and when you open the first page of the Bible, you will find the name Allah is mentioned 16 times in the Arabic translation of the Bible. Now, Shirk, which means polytheism. That means to set up partners with God. Christians say to me, listen, our God is, we have the same one God. I say, yes. Sure, that's agreed. This is the Bible. If anyone want to check it out, the first page contains the name of Allah 16 times, and I bought it from here, from London, from the UK. Anyway, so, polytheism means shirk, and that is to set up partners with God. The Christians say we have the same God. I say yes and no. Yes, we have the same God, but no, we do not have other partners. We don't have parts with God. No parts with God. You see, if you, for the Christians who used to read the Bible, if they open Matthew chapter 28 and they look at the verse, Ma Ella Ella, Ella Ella. What does it mean, Allah, Allah? Which means, my God, my God, that's what the Bible says. Why have you forsaken me? Jesus is calling someone else, my God. For God's sake, this should have been su sufficient evidence for the Christians, for them not to believe that Jesus is God because Jesus was calling someone else my God. When you call someone else my God, how can I call you God while you were calling someone else, saying to him, my God? Jesus was saying to the people, I will go up to my Father and your Father, my God and your God. The person came to Jesus, said to him, Oh, good man, why, why do I have to believe? Listen, the answer, the question and, and the answer is in the Bible itself. What do I have to believe in order to inherit the kingdom of God? What did Jesus say to him? Believe in Father, Son, Holy Ghost? Trinity? Mystery? No. He said, Oh, Israel, the Lord, our God is one. That was the commandment, that was the answer that Jesus gave to the person who was seeking for the inheritance of the kingdom of God, for the eternal bliss in the kingdom of God. He referred him to the Old Testament, to the law of Moses, to the Ten Commandments. All Israel, the Lord our God is one God. If you want that kind of, if you want to inherit the kingdom of God, you have to take Jesus as a mighty prophet of God 
such as David, such as Moses, such as Adam, such as Noah, such as any other prophet. We have no problem in this to take Jesus as a great messenger. And if we do not believe in him, our recitation of the Quran is not accepted. Our prayer is not accepted. Our religion is not accepted. If we do not believe in Jesus Christ and that his mother is the greatest, the, the, the most perfect woman on the face of the earth, we are not Jewish. We do not speak ill against Jesus and his mother. But we say only one thing, don't exaggerate in religion. That is the recommendation of all the prophets to their people. Don't exaggerate in religion and don't think that 